it's time for another episode of the Korea Podcast. Welcome to the 113th episode of the Korea Podcast. I'm your host, Jack, located in Osan, South Korea, uh, at the very tip of the South Korean peninsula, southern tip of the South Korean peninsula, well, almost. Uh, the Korea Podcast is a podcast that talks about anything and everything related to living, working, and hustling in South Korea. Um, and more recently, about crypto, because... How can you live without it? Um, in today's podcast, we're going to cover a bunch of stuff. Uh, of course, we're going to start off, or I'm going to start off with um, news from around Korea um, and talk about all the wonderful things that have been happening here on the peninsula, particularly uh, mainly pertaining to COVID because that's always juicy news um, and some other things. And then we're going to hop over to uh, cryptocurrencies and talk about things that are happening um, elsewhere in the cryptocurrency world. And then I'm going to go to the topic, over to the topic of the day, which is PantherSwap and how to make a hundred bucks a day. Not a scam, just to let you know. Also, I should, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, okay. I can't believe it's 113th episode already, man. That's wild. Um, not to jinx it, I'm not really superstitious, but uh, this is the power of the brainwash that happens throughout our lives, man. Uh, um, for those who don't know, it, it, this may not be so, but uh, I'm of the belief, and I guess, uh, let me just check the... But, uh, I'm of the belief... Yeah, sound is good, everything's good. Um... I'm of the belief that the number 13 is considered to be unlucky uh, uh, based on the Christian principles. Uh, you know, the, the Last Supper, Supper, 12 disciples, um, and the 13th, Jesus, the 13th person, 13th was Judas who betrayed Jesus. Hence, 13th is the unlucky number. Uh, in Korea, of course, it's completely different. Number 4 is unlucky simply because it has a very similar meaning in uh, the tri Chinese translation, very similar meaning to uh, the word death. And so you get a lot of elevators and such in South Korea that are missing the number 4 still to this day. Just like in, in Canada, uh, occasionally you might encounter buildings that are missing the number 13. Only once in my entire life have I found a building like that in Winnipeg and I think it was a government building of some sort it was missing number 13th floor so it went from 12th to 14th very bizarre <clears throat> very very bizarre uh, let's see anybody in the chat view nobody here with us yet um, but there are a couple of people watching I believe hmm there were nobody here right now okay I, I'm sure some everybody's coming to see the cash flow uh, how that's going to happen. Okay, let's hop over to, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, by the way, I had a corona test just a couple of weeks ago. Um, our entire neighborhood, we were having a resurgence of COVID cases. And so um, it wasn't made mandatory for anybody. Um, uh, actually, one of our, it, it was confirmed that the Office of Education was not making COVID tests mandatory, but since our entire neighborhood or nearly our entire neighborhood was undergoing COVID tests, we as a school felt uh, compelled to do it as well. And so uh, all of our teachers and staff went to get tested. Uh, everybody came back negative. And, uh, but it's a very unpleasant experience. It's basically the same procedure. Pretty, yeah, it's the same procedure as that for uh, when you get tested for influenza. Uh, it's a cotton swab that gets shoved down, shoved down your throat and kind of wiggled around. And then another cotton swab that gets shoved down your one of your nostrils. Um, I read somewhere, I heard somewhere that it's, uh, it's a good idea to, to, to decide which nostril you want it to be shoved into just in case sometimes uh, people's nostrils are not even. Uh, when I was a teenager, I got in a fight, got punched in the nose, and my entire bone is twisted, so the cartilage inside my nose is, is bent to the right. Hence, the left side is a bit more open. That's where I prefer to, prefer to get poked. <laughs> so it was the left side. Uh, nonetheless, it's the same procedure. Uh, when you get your flu check, you only do the 
um, the nose part, unless the checks have changed as well. Because I mean, uh, there is, I guess, they, they always update and change the different um, tests, procedures, and whatnot, how tests are done. So, anyway, okay. Um, let's have a look here. Today in the news, in the news in Korea. Uh, what? This is what we're looking for. Okie dokie. Uh, the Korea Herald. We're going to start off with the Korea Herald. In no particular order, I'm just going to go through some news that are happening in South Korea. Uh, safety is taking a back seat in Korea's vaccine rollout. That's not good. Not a good headline. This is a headline from today uh, at 6.07. Let's see what they're talking about. Uh, South Korea's COVID-19 vaccine pr vaccination program has, an, uh, uh, has on critical occasions abandoned an evidence-based approach and departed from the principle of safety first. Uh, I'm gonna keep looking at my phone occasionally because I gotta keep track of my trades here, people. The market's been going a bit haywire recently, but we'll get to that. Um, uh, departed from the principle of safety first and top infectious diseases, epidemi epidemiologists and vaccine experts say. In a race to vaccinate Koreans as quickly as possible, safety concerns went unaddressed. Uh, casting in the process what is the most integral to any successful vaccination programs. Public trust in the system, said Dr. Such and Such, a professor at Korea University's Preventive Medicine Department, in an interview with the Korea Herald. Uh, the government has made it a goal to accomplish herd immunity by November. It not, if not sooner, but rushing will do more harm than good, he warned. He warned. Uh, and I think the reason reason why he's warning is because I'm pretty sure it's impossible to reach herd immunity by November. I think it's been already established that that's not going to happen um, by a number of sources. Not only the fact that Korea presently lacks the appropriate number of vaccinations to accomplish this goal, um, uh, but also by prof other professionals or, or professors who claim that since COVID may always be here, uh, it's never going to go away because it's a type of coronavirus that simply is here. Um, we may never reach herd immunity. So this is kind of like a softening the blow of, of the failure of the present, I think, uh, government that made promises that, which they're not able to keep. Um, in the early weeks of the program, the government told the hospital where I work to complete vaccinations of over 2,000 employees within five days, he said. Uh, other hospitals of similar sizes were instructed the same. As a result of that notice, some staffers had to go into surgery and other appointments on fewer, uh, on fewer, on fever reducers without being able to take time off for the now well-known debilitating side effects, he said. Hmm. But a more ha hazardous oversight occurred in the country's approach to vaccine side effects, according to Chun, as pace takes precedence. Since the national campaign launched in end February, Korea often stood alone in ignoring potential red flags and pushing ahead with vaccinations when other countries were exercising caution, he said. For instance, AstraZeneca's vaccine was granted approval for anyone 18 years of age and over here on February 10th, uh, when there was no data available yet to support its use in older adults, namely those 65 and up. Hmm. Uh, soon after that, the authorities said they would leave it up to doctors to decide whether to give the AstraZeneca vaccine to people in the over 69 age group. me uh, sorry just had to check something <clears throat> that did not bode well in terms of safety reassurance for both those on the giving and receiving end of the vaccination he said
Okay, we're set. When regulators in Europe said they were looking into an unusual type of blood clot that had occurred following AstraZeneca's inoculations in March, several countries put the jobs on hold until the interim uh, findings that were due shortly for announcement. Um, Korea was not one of them. So, while other countries were saying, uh, we're going to stop using this vaccine because it's a bit dangerous, Korea was not one of them, unfortunately. Such significant side effects must be approached with the utmost uh, circumspection. But when, what Korea did instead was proceed without addressing the question surrounding safety, as it waited for the results of a probe by an outside regulator, he said. Korea decided to stop AstraZeneca vaccinations in people younger than 30 eventually, after only after the European Medicines Agency listed the specific blood clotting conditions as a rare side effect of the vaccine. The condition was more frequently observed in young people, the European Union said. Uh, said, agency said. But by that point, at least two people in their 20s had already come down with severe blood clots after AstraZeneca shot shots in Korea just about a month into a vaccination campaign. One of them was diagnosed with clotting in the brain called the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis uh, and the other pulmonary embolism or blockage in the lung arteries. More reports of clotting have su surfaced since but so far Korea hasn't recognized any of them as having a connection to the vaccine. Which means that they won't be compensated. See what I mean? This is this is the thing. This is the double standard that that uh, that occurs. Um, anytime there is there is an underlying condition, like uh, I keep saying, um, uh, when when people with conditions um, pass away because they've acquired COVID, and COVID um, as it is. Let's say that it is a, a stronger version of of the influenza, and it does affect people in a severe way. Um, it goes to say that people with conditions may suffer more and and succumb to to the to to the to the virus, whereas healthier people will be able to make it through. Um, in those cases, the government will point fingers or people will point fingers and say, aha, this person didn't die from the conditions, they died from COVID. On the flip side, when the person's given a vaccination um, but had conditions, they, then, then we're told that they didn't die and they, they happen to die, then we're told that they didn't die because of the vaccination, they died because of the conditions, the underlying conditions that, that they, they, they had. Um, and so there's never a winner. Um, it's always on us. It's always the people. It's never the establishment that it's that's at fault. Never ever. Uh, it's it's very convenient how it's flipped that way. Um, people suffering from serious post-vaccination injuries should be compensated regardless of whether the vaccine was found to be the cause. Uh, he said, proving a link can be extremely difficult for many of these cases. Mm, just a second, this has to stop. Joink. Good. Okay, we're good now. We're good for good. He added that since these vaccina vaccines uh, were new, side effects unseen in clinical trials may well emerge as wider populations are covered. Like I've said before, we need to be humble before what we don't know. Okay, blah blah blah. Point being, um, Just recently, just just to give a flippant example, yeah. Uh, just recently, there was a uh, an interview, or rather, a poll that was showing uh, that the majority of Koreans prefer uh, R4 R4 um, uh, for the taxations of crypt cryptocurrencies. Um, and then, when you read the article later on, it turned out that this poll was based on 500 people. 
uh, literally who have been interviewed on that topic. And so uh, the article claimed that the majority of Koreans, uh, simply because there was a majority of, of, of Koreans from that small 500 people poll, um, said that the majority of Koreans preferred or were for the ta taxation. Uh, while here, you know, it's it, it'll be like, uh, in a month, how many people were vaccinated? Only two people died. And so it's not going to be said that, oh, out of the 52 billion, only two, it will be said out of the 52 or 53 billion people, only two people died. Uh, we don't really hear that underlined. It's said that, oh, um, uh, you know, that's what we're being told rather than out of the small amount of people that were vaccinated uh, within a very short period of time, two already died. We never hear that side. We, it's always the other thing that we hear, the, the opposing um, view. <sighs> okay. I just closed my position. Of course, the market's pumping all the way up. And at the biatch. Okay, vaccination passport faces both expectations and concerns. I have no idea what the vaccination passports are. I was fearing that these would come and apparently they're on their way. Many countries are, are under active discussion on whether to adopt the so-called vaccination passport and Korea is no exception. People ha here are showing mixed reactions with some expressing hopes for it to expedite economic recovery while others worrying uh, about possible discrimination against those who do not hold such passports. Valid concerns. The vaccination passport refers to a certificate confirming that a person has been vaccinated against COVID-19. Right, uh, blah, blah blah. Some countries have already introduced similar programs. Uh, Korea hasn't adopted any such vaccination passport yet, but starting May 5th, the country has been allowing fully vaccinated people to be exempt from the mandatory 14 day isolation period following return from any, any overseas trip or having any close contact with a virus patient. Uh, there is a limit though on that. I heard somewhere that these people must would have to have been vaccinated inside Korea. So uh, if you had, if you were vaccinated outside of Korea, then you would still have to go through the 14-day isolation. I have no idea, but something of that sort. So, in a poll of 838 adults issued by the uh, uh, FKI, a major business lobbying group, Sunday, 67% of the respondents believe that the use of a vaccine passport will help revitalize the economy. Like, out of 52 million people. They use polls that are like minuscule and, and then they they generate um, uh, they generate the results based on these like insignificant numbers that like sways the entire um, way of how population deals with things. That's that's preposterous. That is absolutely ridiculous. What the heck? Uh, the next article comes from uh, Naver News. Thank you, Google, for the auto translation, uh, which is not loading at the moment, of course, because why would it? Okay, thanks. Let's, okay, Tesla. Oh, okay, something away. So away from the COVID, enough of the COVID. I think there's going to be more. Uh, no, 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 no. That's it. That's it for COVID. Enough bashing. I wasn't able to find any crappy um, Articles that like like some of the stuff was posted last week by Jason Ilbo or whatever uh, Anyway, this is neighbor neighbor news Tesla sweeps away subsidies for electric vehicles uh, Is there any problem with the tilt phenomenon? Uh, for a long time for like many years Korea had has had subsidies for electric vehicles So you were able to buy electric vehicles of all sorts and kinds. I remember digging up uh, some information a few years back um, and you were able to scoop up in the vicinity from like 20 to forty thousand dollars or 20 to 40 million won in subsidies for purchasing electric vehicles unfortunately these subsidies were run based on lotteries meaning that um, uh, you would have to enter a lottery and then if you're lucky enough you would win it and then you'd be able to get yourself you know a nice fat juicy check for a subsidy on a brand spanking new electric vehicle uh, but so this is still happening. There are subsidies and apparently a lot of these subsidies are tilting towards uh, Tesla's. Uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the government is subsidizing electric vehicles for solar power generation. This is not new. 
Uh, however, the phenomenon is of being focused on a specific company is severe. Uh, what is new is that uh, Koreans are buying Teslas in large. Um, I think uh, the reason why we're seeing these articles is because Hyundai is taking a beating. Uh, Hyundai has been you know, trying to switch over. I don't know what the numbers are, but I guess they're producing some uh, electric vehicles. Uh, but yet, uh, a lot more people seem to be buying or tilting towards wanting to uh acquire some teslas however the phenomenon of being focused on a specific company is severe this is a uh, reporter blah blah whenever a new industry emerges government subsidies play a key role in expanding the market starting report blah 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 Tesla, which sold more than 3,000 electric vehicles in Korea is the first quarter in the first quarter of, of last year, uh, is the case. Tesla Model Y conductor, I have to buy it in March. I made a reservation at that time, so we talked about it on June 5th to get in touch. Anyway, Tesla. Tesla's getting all the subsidies. Everybody's going for Tesla. Nobody wants to buy the Korean brand, I guess. Um... Last bit of, of news here on the Korean front, uh, we have a guest, we have a guest, ooh how exciting, live chat, where's my live chat, it disappeared, oh blimey, hmm? what happened, doindy doing. doindy doindy doing. Dogecoin, Sydney FD, Doge will make millionaires. Yeah, okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second. In a second, hold your horses there, Mr. Dogecoin. In a second, hold your horses there, Mr. Dogecoin. All right, Moon says, ooh, I can't close this up, okay. Moon says, Moon says, he's thinking, Moon says, he's thinking, ooh. Too much noise here people too much noise alrighty I got too many windows open okay we're good we're good uh, moon says he's thinking of special pardon so I don't know if you're following if you've been following the news of the uh, CEO of Samsung um, being locked up being being locked up uh, for allegedly having uh, been part of a bribery scheme circle of evil maliciousness uh, President Moon Jae-in apparently on Monday sounded more receptive to freeing jailed Samsung leader Lee Jae-yong and two former presidents a change from earlier flat rejections um, the two four I don't know if you remember but the last two president uh, presidents um, whose name I completely forget um, they were both right, uh, right-sided, right-wingers, um, and they were both jailed. Uh, and now, the Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee um, has been jailed. Uh, but apparently, President Moon is leaning towards pardon. I'm seeking growing demands. I'm seeing growing demands, particularly from economic and religious communities, that Samsung uh, Electronic Vice Chairman E uh, be pardoned. Moon said in the press conference Monday morning at the Blue House. Things are not good, looking good for Korean economy, I guess, and uh, some people are becoming upset. So there you go. There you go. Okay, so that's it. That's it. That's it for Korean news. Basically, uh, chat view. Let's have a look here. Um, um, we are going to hop over to to the cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's see. Let's have a look. What's what's in the crypto world? Um, ETH is pushing for all-time highs. Uh, it's going bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, it is crazy. Uh, ETH broke $4,000 uh, just in the past two couple of days. Um, Binance Coin is on the third place. Dogecoin, which everybody's talking about. Uh, flipped Cardano at, uh, at Tether and is about to flip some say uh, Binance coin. Binance coin presently st stands at 102 billion dollars market, ca market cap. Uh, Dogecoin is at 67 and I still don't understand why uh, Cardano or Polkadot for that matter have not done any better. Polkadot and Cardano have been very quiet. Uh, Cardano saw a little bit um, movement right there but 
not as much as, as, as you would expect, I think, and is, should expect. I think Cardano is a very long hold. Um, it's, apparently it's a slow moving project, but I can see Cardano exploding. Um, and there are, there are several videos out there that are really good in explaining how and why, uh, and uh, I'm not even going to attempt because I just don't carry enough weight uh, in that department or, or um, know-hows. In any case, in any case, yesterday, uh, Saturday Night Live premiered uh, with uh, the Doge father, as they call him now, uh, Elon Musk, uh, who was uh, very adamant about uh, pumping the coin on Saturday Night Live, and he did a pretty good job, although I'll get to say it wasn't as impressive. I don't know, I guess I was expecting a lot more, and of course, as predicted, a lot of people predicted that Dogecoin would dump right before on, on Friday. It didn't dump on Friday, it did dump on Saturday, literally, I think, either during the, during the show or right after. Um, and it's at 49, it was at 59, or 50, almost 60 cents yesterday <clears throat> before the program, before the show, Saturday Night Live show, and it dumped. Um, the sentiment is that since Dogecoin is here and it's, uh, it's here to stay, um, apparently SpaceX, Elon Musk's um, ventures, um, is going to accept <coughs> Dogecoin as the only form of payment for its first mission to the moon uh, of some sort. What that means for, for the Dogecoin itself, I don't know. Uh, in, the, in the chat, <coughs> who's in the chat? Sydney saying Dogecoin will make millionaires. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. There is another um, coin and let me just check which one was it here uh, oh yes there you go uh doge inheriting shiba inu features to launch on binance um shiba inu um and usdt pair launched on binance just today i think uh after promising to low to add shiba inu Binance Crypto Exchange has announced the upcoming launch of futures based on this Doge inspired token. Very strange to see Binance add such token because Binance does, doesn't usually deal with shit coins. Um, but apparently they did take the leap here. Um, so now Binance also has, you can purchase yourself some Shiba Inu on Binance. Uh, Shiba Inu is an ERC20 cryptocurrency ranked 19th on <clears throat> on coin market cap earlier today binance announced listing this coin 19th what what am i missing here 19th on coin market cap coin market cap it ain't 19th theta is 19th how is it listed 19th what kind of hooey is that what Something's askew. Maybe 1019th or something. There is no Shiba Inu anywhere here in sight, man. Let's see where it would where, where place a Shiba Inu on. Shiba Inu. Where are we here? 17th. What? How, how did I miss that? Solana is on the 17th. Oh, here, 18th. It dumped. Okay. But it's still pumped. It's at 29. What is it? Point zero 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 two nine six three. Uh, oh, just jumped up to three three. Fantastic. Hundred sixty percent gains. Not bad. It's bizarre. <laughs> if you want to pump another coin, here you go. Shiba Inu. Doge is old news, man. I wouldn't even bother getting into Doge. Although I guess if it's gonna pump, it's pumped just now as we speak. Um, uh, might be a good buy. Shiba Inu. Eighteenth. Um, look at this. Uh, you buy millions. The market cap is massive. What is it there? Uh, 11 billion market cap? That's insane. Is that... <coughs> Excuse me. Volume, 24 hour volume, 11 billion. Mm. Where is it? Shiba Inu. Let's have a look here. Circulating supply, 394,000? No, oh, billion. Okay, 394 billion Shiba Inu. Uh, total supply, Jesus, what is that? Uh, million, billion, trillion, quadrillions. Holy macaroni. That's like one quadrillion of these puppies. But uh, here's the pump. So basically, it was like worth 0.000006 and then bumped up here. And I guess right after the listing, right before the listing, poof, 
exploded to like 10 million market cap or some such 12 12 million in trading volume in 24 hour period nutty nutty absolutely nutty but this is your substitute this is the cheaper substitute for your dogecoin Do dogecoin needs i guess i don't even know compared to dogecoin what the what the numbers are if if it's more or less of the tokens but uh yeah okay moving on let's go on to the next uh okay this is our shiba inu um, this is a nifty little site. If you don't have access to this sucker, I highly recommend it. This is very, very, very useful for anybody living here in South Korea. This is very pertaining to South Korea. This is about the kimchi premium. If you're interested in knowing how much kimchi premium you've got presently between the different exchanges, you come to this little spunky site. Why is my chat not showing up? as it should be in my window in my window i'm not entirely sure anyway okay uh this is a pretty cool thing if you're interested in the kimchi premium then check it out uh it gives you the number or the amount of money it's worth on binance for example right here how much it's worth on so bitcoin <clears throat> how much is worth on upbit um change in percentage volume um, and it also gives you the kimchi premium which is right now 12 percent so if you're interested in trading uh, getting some hand some of some hands on your kimchi premium then trading uh bitcoin between binance and upbit gives you 12 almost 13 percent pre <clears throat> premium excuse me Man, I need some water. And if you're trading Ethereum, your premium is at 13%, which is pretty nifty. Um, there are other exchanges, Bybit, um, Ethereum and Bitcoin both give you between Bybit, Upbit, um, you get their 12 and 13 respectively. So very similar, but Kimchi premium 12.52%. Um, my friend suggested that this may be a very good indicator. I think the Kimchi premium in Korea is present in order to keep the uh, people from um <clears throat> selling short can you trade yes you can trade with binance what what do you mean what can you yeah you can trade anything with binance that's what binance is it's a it's a it's a trading exchange so yes if you have stuff on binance and you want to send it to uh to korea for some kimchi premium then you can definitely do that and here is you know here here's your premium uh and also lists all the other premiums which all stand at like 13. <clears throat> so, uh, the higher the kimchi premium, the higher chances are of a massive dump coming up. But this is not uh, a theory that's been checked just yet, but something, a hunch, that, um, that has, been, has been thrown my way by a, by a good colleague. Oh yeah, so, uh, so watch out for these things. Okay, what's the next bit? Let's have a look at that. South Korea company crypto holdings passed 10 billion won. Pow! South Korean companies are getting more and more into crypto. Yeah, yeah. Local media outlets uh, are reporting that several well-known South Korean companies are holding cryptocurrencies as intangible assets demonstrating the growth of the market. The Korean Herald reported that at least 23 companies in the nation are holding one or more cryptocurrencies as intangible assets. The financial reports uh, of the 23 entities filed with the financial supervisory service last year uh, uh, companies that hold more than 10 billion won in cryptocurrencies include Dunami, Kakao, Bitdam, Korea and, and Coinon. Well the last two are kind of uh, <laughs> cryptocurrencies so of course they're gonna <laughs> cryptocurrency exchanges of course they're gonna have cryptocurrencies. Kakao has its own version of uh, some kind of cryptocurrency uh wallet and i looked at it it was i forget what it's called uh, i tried to install it but it's all in korean and it's just you know hieroglyphics for me for the most part it's too difficult to navigate through uh dunamu look at that 40 it's got the highest percent it's got more more crypto than uh the the two uh cryptocurrency exchanges combined jeez louise okay fantastic uh, Dynamo's holdings are worth roughly 41.2 million, which includes Bitcoin and Ethereum. In 2020 alone, the company bought 742 Bitcoin. The Korean internet company Kakao holds 17.6 billion won in cryptocurrencies and made a profit of 390 uh, million won after selling some last year. Uh, hence the big dump. <laughs> Whenever that happened, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but the holdings are not limited to large well-known companies. The report notes that a restaurant company called Sikui uh, had 1 billion won in crypto. 
uh, with the way the market is moving, there is a good chance that more local businesses will make crypto a part of their holdings. Furthermore, South Korea has also uh, been offering more clarity on regulation. Is that right? Let's see. Where is that? South Korea lawmakers uh, mobile new crypto legislation. <clears throat> okay. Let's have a read here. Where is that? With the country falling behind uh, the likes of China and the emerging digital economy, South Korean lawmakers and blockchain industry in insiders are working to create clear-cut regulations for digital assets. Stakeholders call for speedy passes of virtual asset business law. Uh, according to a press release issued by South Korean DeFi lending platform Delio, industry participants recently held uh, held a seminar with lawmakers to discuss the establishment of a virtual asset business law. A virtual asset business law. Can you believe that? Things are getting seriously serious, man. At the conference, the attendees... Um, the attendees what are we at here in terms of timeage okay all right okay okay we'll skip through this stuff is happening uh alipay is set to allow users to test china's digital yuan uh so china's been working on its own version of um, of a digital currency and apparently alipay is going to be the first one to test it <clears throat> fantastic see south korean to clamp down on online cryptocurrency phishing activity very good man very good get rid of those scam bots uh most annoying uh south korea sunday said it will strengthen its monitoring systems okay very good we like we like uh institutional investors are behind ethereum surge above four thousand analysts uh, uh, analyst although uh, numerous factors are uh, going in, in Ethereum's way the latest surge about 4,000 could be largely attributed to institutional investors says crypto fund uh, I think BitBoy crypto talked about it uh, a month ago or so saying that there is a huge push a large push of um, uh, what do you call them institutional investors uh, there's there, he was kind of hinting at the fact that there was a lot of money being pumped into uh, ethereum um, which is probably what's happening right now what has been happening and and that's why uh, ethereum has been surging but um, stay vigilant people don't hold your bags for too long yeah right okay swiss banking giant ubs to reportedly offer rich clients crypto investments see more banks. Banks are offering crypto investments to wealthy clients. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now we're coming to what's in our chat. What's happening in the chat? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. ETH and Bitcoin. Bitcoin both went up. Yeah, they've been. Uh, oh, sorry, not uh, Bitcoin. Uh, ETH Classic. Just keep in mind that from what I understand, ETH Classic has nothing to back it up. Yeah. So this is how, uh, how, how Ethereum was explained to, to me and how I understand it. Ethereum Classic. What is Ethereum Classic, you might wonder, yeah? So <clears throat> Ethereum Classic is actually the original Ethereum that was developed by Vitalik Buterin. Um, but unfortunately, due to a hack or some such, um, a bunch of people lost, well, uh, there were millions in funds were lost and so um, uh, the team and Buterin were trying to backtrack to uh, to to fix the problem and they tried to backtrack um, or, or fork away from 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 the original Ethereum uh, and created a new Ethereum which is the Ethereum that we know now and that's Ethereum 2 so um, and so the money was recovered um, and but the uh, the initial ethereum project was abandoned uh, and so that is ethereum classic which means it's just a project that was started and has never been uh continued to to be built upon the ethereum that we know now is the second phase and that's the one that we all love so much and that's been then exploding to four thousand and that's the one that's got the entire um uh development team and everybody else working on its on its growth uh while ethereum classic is the original ethereum 
that has been basically abandoned um, and similar to Dogecoin, there's nobody working on it. It's not being developed. It's just kind of an empty shell of a cr cryptocurrency. Um, and it's just there. There are no projects being built on it. There is nothing. There are no developers working on it. Um, it survives solely on the hopes and dreams of people putting their money into into cryptocurrencies that are essentially memes because i think that's became a meme uh crypto the ethereum classic is a meme by now that, that's how you could see it but yeah it's been pumping uh pumping and dumping ethereum classic and some people say it might even go further but who knows but yeah just keep in mind there's nothing to support it. there's no projects on it nothing nada nix zero uh you look at things like ada um and um and dot and and you might want to stop and wonder why is ethereum classic pumping when there's nothing behind them while ada and and uh and polka dot are there's the whole entire ecosystems are being developed and there's there are other projects that are doing similar things and yet you've got things like dogecoin pumping um and ethereum classic pumping and i think these will be very short run success stories um that will Fain away or or basically will be there for the masses while while the the smart money um will move into uh massively into dot and and polka dot and sorry ada cardano and polka dot while uh dumb money the retail investors will will cling cling to dogecoin and ethereum classic and such i mean you can still make money on it i guess when it's pumping it's pumping it doesn't matter in the end we all want to get a piece of that pie okay and so with that in mind we're going to that pie here we go uh panther swap panther swap this is the thing i was talking about panther swap is an exchange if you're familiar with pancake swap um <clears throat> You will you'll be you'll find PantherSwap to be very intuitive. It's uh, basically a copy. Uh, am I staking Cardano? Um, I was staking a little bit. Um, I hope ETH beats ADA. What do you mean? ETH has been beaten ADA. <laughs> you mean Ethereum Classic? Maybe. Um, PantherSwap is is basically a copy of uh, PancakeSwap, um, and until yesterday, it was actually run um, over the PancakeSwap exchange. Um, yesterday, PantherSwap uh, went through a merge, uh, not a merge, an, an update, and basically has become its own um, cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, the trades work exactly the same as on uh, uh, pancake swap you've got your you can choose your pairs it ASR I have no idea what the ASR are just to let you know I'm not connected to it right now uh, I don't know how to connect through my computer I use my phone for it for some strange reason so anyway uh, it's mainly because it uses um, metamask um, to connect but you can uh, you can access Panther Swap through Trust Wallet, uh, which is fantabulastic, um, and that's what I've been doing. But if you do have um, your um, MetaMask connected to your your, your uh, browser, then you can use Panther Swap with MetaMask in this way. Um, Anyway, okay, so it's basically the same. You've got exchange liquidity, LP migration, and if you feel the need to, you can you can hop over to Pancake Swap just by going here. And if you look at Pancake Swap, it's literally, um, literally, an identical copy of of Panther Swap, or Panther Swap is an identical copy of uh, Pancake Swap. Uh, go into pancake swap and and just like uh, panther swap and just like pancake swap <clears throat> it's got pools and farms and all that good stuff but uh, if you go over to the farms the farms have if like the magnificent percentages on gains uh, 1676 percent gains and this is no joke I, i've been farming this sucker these two panther busd and panther bnb for the past um 
I want to say three days, four days. Um, and basically it depends on how much money you're staking in it. <clears throat> um, you will, your, your return will, will vary. Right now, Panther, here's a, the price for Panther. Can you see it? Yeah. The value of one Panther is $2.811 uh, per Panther. Uh, Panther. Uh, if you are staking Panther Bust, BUSD, your return for every $1,000 invested will be 16.34 Panthers, uh, which equates to, what is it, like 30, uh, 32, 33 per day, something like that. Um, so you're able to to make um, massive gains if you wanted to throw in two three four thousand dollars you can do that and of course then you're making a lot more seven days 131 panthers times basically 2.8 panther will start it off at zero then it pumped up to if you go to what is it poop coin watch <laughs> fantastic poop coin app uh, fantastic name for this thing uh, Panther swap token. Um, let's have a look here at the history of uh, the pumpamentos here. So Panther swap. It started off low uh, at or was it here? Where did it start? Somewhere around here, I guess. So it went down to 0 0.02, which was a fabulous time. During that time. Um, the APR was somewhere around 4,000 uh, in return. Basically, the APR depends um, on <clears throat> how many people are staking the coin and the value of the coin itself. Um, and it, Panther pumped to 5.2, it dumped to 1.5, uh, and it went up to... Right now, it stands at 2.7. So, um, it's a... Um, I don't know if it's listed on coin coin market cap. I it may be not yet. I think they're working on on that right now. Panther Panther swap. No, not yet. So they're working on being listed on coin market cap. Yeah, they're they're working on being listed on coin market cap and I think if you go to more Let's have a look at the roadmap here. I was looking at it earlier. Um, bada bada lottery, AMM, partnerships, uh, apply for listings on Coin Market Cup, Coin Gecko, Dad Raider, BSC Scan. So they're listed on BSC Scan. You can find them there, um, I believe. I want to say that you do. Um, and I guess they have applied for all these. They must be waiting for the results. And I'm sure they will come in because. <clears throat> Panther swap is it's turning quite massive uh, if you go home have a look at some of the statistics here uh, market cap 62 million dollars uh, total mine 63 million coins total burn 2 million coins uh, it's a deflationary token uh, total locked rewards 12 million uh, circulating supply 22 million max tax amount I have no idea what that is to be honest transfer tax so every time you transfer you pay a tax so uh, some of the pro proceeds um, when you when you cash in when you transfer your your tokens or whatever some of it gets redistributed <clears throat> and sent back into the contract um, and uh, pays for fees and all that stuff so and some of it gets burned as well so uh, it increases the value of the token yeah yeah Okay, uh, total value locked, uh, 288 million dollars across all farms and pools. So that's how much money is staked, being staked right now in Panther Swap. 288 million dollars. Oh, you can even see that behind me. There you go. That's it. There you go. Okay. Visible. Um, so, if you are in crypto, and if you're not, then you should. Uh, either way, whether through you do it through Panther Swap or some other through some other means, I highly suggest that you start educating yourself because uh, cryptocurrencies are, uh, believe it or not, like it or not, are becoming um, widely accepted by banks, institutions, and if you don't jump on the boat right now, you'll be left behind, just like with everything else. Uh, institutions grab a hold of, and then you know, there's nothing left for the little people, so to speak. Yeah. 
um, in any case I've included a ref link below the video it's somewhere somewhere in the bottom in the far uh, far far reaches of the corner copy I'm gonna paste it here in the chat because why the heck not yeah stack up your F and Satoshi's yeah that's right that's right man here um, if you want to join uh, follow the ref link Panther swap man um, within two days I, I've cashed out some already because just wanted to test out the waters and it's legit it's working well like I said the um, the exchange has become its own exchange is no longer piggybacking on pancake swap which is fantastic because it shows that it's actually um, you know working uh, it's 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 a product on its own um, and you can find it at pantherswap.com just or simply follow the link include it <coughs> below the video help a brother out if you want to support the channel then make sure to like the video I forgot to mention that like you know everybody does it I always forget because I really I do care I do care I just forget to mention it so if you're enjoying this video make sure to like the the video smash up the likes subscribe subscribe to the channel um, and if you're interested in Panther swap then head over uh, to the ref link join um, and make some money because for a couple of thousand dollars you could be cashing in um, you know hundred bucks a, a day or more um, the way it works is you basically you have to stake so if you go to farms panther bust you need to basically you need to send in your go to the exchange uh, you need to have um, an equal amount the the farm is split you need to have an equal amount of bus BUSD an equal amount of panther uh, or an equal amount of B BNB and an equal amount of panther um, so whatever that is uh, and so basically you could go here's BNB uh, is already listed here and then you'd go and panther here is panther uh, once you swap so let's say you send in I don't know you have BNB so okay that's in liquidity you you would go to add liquidity um, and then you would have BNB whatever BNB amount of BNB you would have and then panther um, and essentially you would basically max out if you have more BNB then you would want to max out the lesser amount so that it's equal if you have more Panther which I don't assume you would because if that's the first thing first time uh, you getting onto Panther swap then you wouldn't uh, so you would need to uh, exchange some BNB or BUSD into Panthers uh, and always remember to leave some BNB because uh, Panther swap runs on the uh, um, the Binance Smart Chain, which means that it requires you to have BNB um, to perform the transactions, to pay for the transactions. Uh, yeah, where are we here? Okay, so uh, rewards for the Panther BUSD is 4.59%, 16 Panthers per day uh, on the uh, BNB. Right now it's about the same. Four, wow, it is exactly the same. Uh, it was a lot higher for the Panther BUSD, but I guess a lot more people are staking that than they were BNB because the the, the prices were higher. Um, these are this is the new migrated version, uh, the old version right here. If you want to compare, this is the older version. I think Panther BUSD like two thousand percent. This is the old version. This is going to be discontinued uh, in the next on the thirteenth, I think. So it's still active now so people can withdraw their funds and, and merge them over to the new contracts. <clears throat> but just to show you, um, these are the returns. If you want to stake DOT and BNB, 800%, 886%. Um, and just, just so you understand, it's not a scam. It's nothing unusual. It's the same thing that PancakeSwap offers. Uh, it's just the return rates are lower uh, on PancakeSwap. PancakeSwap has farms as well. And if you go over to the farms, you've got Cake BNB at 60%, 20%. Here is uh, M Coin UST at 471%, 149% return. So uh, basically, you get in one day, you get 22 of these suckers here. Here you get um, 0.07 for every 4,000. Here you get 0.34. 
Um, yeah, so there you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. Multiply it by one. There you go. Alrighty. That's gonna be it. That's all I got to say about that. Basically, Binance version of Ethereum network. Yeah, basically. Basically, that's what it is. Um, it, it, but the fees are a lot cheaper, obviously. The Binance uh, smart chain, obviously, the fees are, you know, pennies. Uh, right now, Ethereum has become inaccessible. Uh, buy it, keep it, keep the bags for Ethereum, don't sell it, don't trade it, because the fees on Ethereum are uh, just ridiculously high, exorbitantly high. Um, and it's unfortunate, but that's what it is. And so I think with the updates that Ethereum is going through, uh, the new things that are being rolled out on Ethereum, this is supposed to be remedied. And I think once that happens, if it happens, um, if Ethereum, once Ethereum 2.0 comes out, um, if everything works well, then Ethereum is going to explode. Uh, we should be seeing massive gains for Ethereum holders. So huddle people, huddle your Ethereum because it could be goldy-ish. Uh, but in the meantime, Binance Smart Chain is the place to go. Uh, and either way, it's a fantastic hold anyway, BNB, because, you know, it's a utility token for an exchange. Um, wish I'd gotten on that sucker sooner, right? <laughs> it was 30 bucks. Anyway, alrighty, that's it for tonight. <clears throat> 42 minutes. Damn! Way, way into, into the timeage. So, uh, once again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you did enjoy this, make sure to smash up the like, um, subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in finding out how to procure Panther Swap, how to get involved, how to jump on it, um, I should, I guess, make a tutorial maybe, uh, or just let me know in the comment section below that you want a tutorial, or you could probably just find one. There's, there's really good tutorials out there. Um, and follow the link, follow the ref link, get involved, get on it, make some cash, enjoy your crypto experience. Um, and that's it, man. Have a good night, have a good evening, have a fantastic um, eh, remainder of this week. Enjoy the rest of your, what is it? May 10th. Um, if you're not located in South Korea, then enjoy the beginning of your May 10th. I hope everybody had a good Mother's Day with their moms. I sent my mom a little flower uh, on on the chat and wished her Mother's Day. I, at least I managed. Most of the time I think I forget. So, good one on me, I guess, that I didn't forget this time. Anywho, uh, take care, everyone. Have a good week. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you in the next podcast next week on whatever the heck date that's going to be on the 17th of May. Good night.